Now what we're going to need to do is look at some fundamental scientific laws. The first one we're going to deal with is the law of cause and effect. Now it is so fundamental you might not know that you use it on a regular basis, but you do. Suppose I were standing up here this night and as I, were speak, as I was speaking to you, let's say I had a book next to me on a table. And you were listening to me in rapt attention and you were paying very close attention to what was being said. And all of a sudden this book that was sitting on the table beside me shot across the room going 95 miles an hour and crashed into the back wall. And you looked up at me with eyes as big as saucers and you said, Kyle, what caused that? And I said, oh, nothing. It just spontaneously occurred. Sometimes, you know, books just spontaneously shoot across rooms going 95 miles an hour and crashing into back walls. Does that happen? No. You know that doesn't happen. Why immediately do you ask yourself what caused that? Well, because the fundamental law of cause and effect says that in this material universe, every material effect that you see has a cause that came before it and that was greater than it. Well, suppose I said, oh, I'm just kidding. You know, it had to have a cause. Of course we know that. But let me tell you what that cause was. As I was speaking to you, a large housefly about the size of a dime plopped his fat little housefly body on the edge of this book and catapulted this book 95 miles an hour to the back of the room. Now, do you believe that? No, you certainly don't. At least you shouldn't. Well, it's a cause that came before the book shooting across the room. What's the problem with it? It's not adequate. It's not big enough. Let me give you another illustration. Suppose we were driving down the interstate and you were next to a large truck and that truck was going about 70 miles an hour and all of a sudden that truck came to a screeching halt, did four flips and landed in the ditch. Well, you quickly pulled over. You pulled out your cell phone, dialed 911, got out and went to help the driver of that truck and you say, are you okay? And he said, yeah, but you got to get everybody off the road. You say, why? He says, well, they're everywhere. And you say, what is everywhere? He said, I saw it about 15 yards in front of me and I couldn't do anything about it. And you say, well, what did you see? He said, it was the meanest, most menacing, vicious mosquito I've ever seen. And it planted into the grill of my truck and caused my truck to do four flips into the ditch. And you get your cell phone back out and you call 911 again and you say, uh, we've got a little bit more serious head trauma than I originally thought. You need to get here a little bit quicker. Why? What's a cause that came before the truck flipping into the ditch? Certainly. But it's not what? It's not big enough. It's not great enough. Suppose I were to ask you a question. What is the standard evolutionary scenario that supposedly explains the origin of this universe? Here's what you would hear. About 13.7 billion years ago, a tiny singularity that they don't even really know what to call it, either matter or energy or something of the sort, smaller than a proton, a subatomic particle, exploded in what was called the Big Bang. Immediately after that explosion, something called inflation supposedly started launching all of the matter and energy out into the universe, bringing into existence everything that you see here. Now we need to ask a very pertinent question. Before we get into anything else, what we need to ask is where did that tiny ball of matter and energy come from? Now. What I'm telling you is that's the textbook evolutionary atheistic answer. When you ask those same people, where'd that tiny ball of matter come from? Uh, suppose we ask Dr. Dawkins. Do you know what Dr. Dawkins says in his book, The Blind Watchmaker? He wrote a book, The Blind Watchmaker, that supposedly explains design in nature. But in it, he has a paragraph that is supposed to deal with the original ball of stuff that brought the universe into existence. And do you know what he says? He says, well, I'm a biologist. And biologists don't really deal with the original ball of stuff. So I'm just going to let the physicist answer that question for me. 
Oh, well, thank you, Dr. Dawkins. You don't have an answer for that, so you're going to let someone else answer that for you. Well, that's very convenient. But let's do. Let's let the physicist answer Dr. Dawkins' problem for him. What do the physicists say about where that tiny ball of stuff originated? Well, let's ask them. I want you to read with me a quote from a man named Dr. Alan Guth. Dr. Guth is one of the key players in the Big Bang inflationary model. He is one of the men who came up with this idea that is now accepted in most places. Here's what he says. The inflationary model of the universe provides a possible mechanism by which the observed universe could have evolved from an infinitesimal region. It is then tempting to go one step further and speculate that the entire universe evolved from literally nothing. Well, you've got to get that original ball of stuff from somewhere. Dr. Goose, where did it come from? Well, it was infinitesimally small. In fact, so small that you almost want to say it came from literally nothing. Now, let's frame that in a, a real-life perspective. Suppose that you are there and I come up to you and I hit you in the face as hard as I can with literally nothing. We got a problem? No, we don't have a problem. It doesn't hurt because if you look up Noah Webster's Dictionary and you look up the word nothing, it says something that does not exist. Suppose I hit you with something that does not exist. We've got no problem. Aristotle said nothing is the things that rocks, is the thing that rocks dream about. Well, what do rocks dream about? Nothing. Something that doesn't exist, I just hit you with literally nothing. Well, let's ask, ask Dr. Guth. Dr. Guth, uh, what do you mean by literally nothing? That's what the Omni Magazine reporter asked Dr. Guth. He said, well, so how big was this pre-inflation universe? This infinitesimally small region that you just suggested came from literally nothing. He said, well, you know, it's amazingly small. Well, thank you, Dr. Guth. I, I should think so if it came from literally nothing. But watch what he says. Well, only about 10 to the minus 24 centimeters across, smaller than a proton, and also amazing, it would have only weighed about uh, 25 pounds. If I hit you in the face with literally, literally nothing, we've got no problem. If I come up and hit you in the face with something I call nothing, but it weighs 25 pounds, do we have a problem now? You bet we do. You know, Abraham Lincoln once said, if you call a dog's tail a leg, how many legs does a dog have? He said four. You can call his tail whatever you want to. It's still a tail. You know, you can say that this tiny ball of matter came from literally nothing. But then when you say, oh, and that literally nothing would have been infinitesimally small. It would have only been uh, smaller than a proton. It would have weighed 25 pounds. Okay, well, where did you get that smaller than a proton thing that weighed 25 pounds? Well, how far back are you going to go? We know for a fact that material things cannot come from nothing. This is a common sense truism. Now listen to me, you understand it well. If there ever was a time where there was literally nothing, what would you have right now? Literally nothing. But you can look around and see that we've got something that's a whole lot more than nothing. Well, so let's go back to the law of cause and effect. In this material universe, every material effect has a cause that came before it and that was greater than it. The evolutionists, we're not even granting them that first ball of matter, but suppose that they did have it. Just suppose, although they can't get it, suppose they did. Do you know what that tiny ball of matter would have to explain? That tiny ball of matter would have to explain the origin of our entire universe. 